I've been writing Bible studies for Focus for the last three years. And after about a year, I got to a situation, we really love feedback. I love getting feedback because I get the lay of the land. I know how to make improvements. And I got in this situation where I'd get feedback on a particular Bible study. could be really anyone. And some people would say, on this Bible study, it was just way too simple. I mean, my group, they're just way too advanced for it. Another group would come and say, that Bible study, same study, that's just way too difficult. It was way over my guy's head. And other people would come and say, that was just right. That was just what my study needed. That was perfect. And I'd sit there and say, is a Bible study too simple? Is it too complex? Or is it just right? You know, I have people who are leading Bible studies in New York. I have people leading Bible studies in Nebraska. I have people in Bible studies who are male. I have some who are female. I have people in Bible studies who are freshmen. And some are seniors. How do I make one Bible study that fits every single group? Do I write three, kind, three Bible studies? Do I write one topic like salvation history for women and one for men? Do I, how do I do this? What I realized is ultimately I can't. I can't write the perfect Bible study. It's in Denver, Colorado, on a mountain, right? Just outside of Denver. That's my window of my office on a mountain. I did that myself, by the way. I was pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Put the arrows in. Pretty excited. Um, I, I don't know what your small group's like. I'm on this mountain. You have all different shapes, all different people. From week to week, it can change. The person that knows your group the best is you. The person that can conform your Bible study to your group is you. And so I wanted to create a system to help really conform to your group. The first thing that we did was we made our Bible studies more scriptural. Trying to put the Bible back in Bible study, as we say. Trying to make them more scriptural. Because the thing is, my words can't hit you like God's word can. St. Gregory the Great says this, Scripture is like a river, broad and deep, shallow enough here for lambs to go wading, and deep enough there for elephants to go swimming. The writer of Hebrews says that Scripture, the word of God, is living and active. That can cut to your very soul. Kevin Cotter's words do not cut to your soul. They're not living and active. So we let scripture, this amazing gift that we have in God's word, to be able to hit people on totally different levels. So we want to make each study focused on one large passage of scripture that you can really dive into, into that river wherever you're at. The second thing we did is you still have to write questions. I still have to write discussion questions with my words that aren't living and active. And so what we did was we want to make a, uh, allow you to change those questions because you're the one there in the study that knows your group. I want you to think of yourself like a chef, right? We're going to give you the cookbook and we're going to give you the ingredients, but the way you cook those things can be very different based on your group and who you're serving for. Just like any cook, any chef is going to make a particular meal for the group that's coming for the way they like to prepare it, right? We want to give you everything you need for the study, but don't just think that you don't need to be involved, that you don't need to be active, that you don't need to cook for your audience, so to speak. That's really our goal with our study. So let's look at how to do this. This is Focus Equip. How many of you have been to Focus Equip before? Okay, fair amount. How many of you used a Focus Equip Bible study before? Okay. How many of you have edited the questions of a focus equipped Bible study? Okay, we're getting there. How do we do this? A little orientation of focus equip. We have start here, introduce you to the site, discover with a lot of our media articles, uh, video, audio, get involved, connect you with all of uh, our different websites, our store, and then leader resources. So if you haven't done this with our studies before, you can go ahead and go in. Leader resources, evangelization, Bible studies, discipleship. So if you went into Bible studies and electronic Bible studies, you'd come to this page. You have our How to Lead a Bible Study series along with the Crux, Living Gospel, and 1 Corinthians. So in this case, we actually, you guys, came up with questions for chapter 2 of Living Gospel. The scripture passage is Matthew, in that chapter 2, praying daily, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So what you do is you just come in here. You click on chapter 2, and they come up with a PDF. Uh, by the way, 
each Bible study also has an article that goes with it. If you see resources for each chapter. So as a leader, if you're ever looking for additional material on that topic that you want to share with your group, you want to pull out of your bag if they have extra questions, that's just a quick article that you can have for your study. All right, keep going. So here's what a Bible study looks like. Chapter 2. You're going to scroll down to the questions. That's what all the questions look like. And this might be hard to see. It's not so much seeing the text, but seeing them side by side. So you can just take on the left, it's a PDF, and just copy and paste the questions, just like you would a Word document. Have a Word document right next to it. Hit Control-C on the PDF, Control-V to paste, and put it right in the Word document. And then right then and there, you can change the questions around. So you could say, wow, Kevin, that's a terrible opening question. It's really corny, and I don't think anyone's going to respond to that. That's terrible. Great, change the question. I have no problem with that. Go in, put in a Word document, switch out the opener, and put whatever opening question you want. You could say, I just don't think there's enough application questions. I think Kevin just missed it here. There's an awesome application point, and he's not seen it. Awesome, erase my application question and put in your own. I want you to feel like after you lead a study that you really owned it. That wasn't the material's fault. There can still be some weaknesses in it. But that you said, all right, I'm really going to sit with this. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to look at the questions beforehand and make them really fit my study so that you really can conform the study to them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. I really want you to own your studies because, again, I work on a mountain in Denver, Colorado. I don't know your study. You do. It's a big part of taking ownership of your studies, taking that extra time. I know you're busy, but just taking that extra 15 minutes, maybe in prayer and just looking over the passage. How does this hit me? What kind of questions do I want to ask? I think it's so important. It's so huge. 